Hi, I'm Tracy Kreiling. I work at the Littleton store at Rocky Mountain Sewing and Vacuum. And this is February and I'm here to do sew fun for you today. We've got a lot of great projects, some really cool quilts and a few little things that'll for home deck stuff. So hope you enjoy it. So the project we have for you now is called the Book Buddy Gnome by Bella Nona Patterns. He's a cute little guy. He'd look great in Christmas fabric. You can make him to match your decor like I did for a cousin of mine. Um, the, he went together really easy. The little gnome can hold a little book or a little project, a gift card or something in his back pocket. And what's great is he has snaps in his hands so he can hold a gift card or a package of wet wipes so you can be sanitary this time of seasons. Um, it's great, he has little elastic in his legs so they're kind of bouncy. His arms have bounce, or elastic in them also so they're a little bouncy. The only thing I didn't like about when I was putting this together is you sew them all together, you leave the open, the opening is in the front for you to stuff them and everything. If you left the opening up in the back, across, right across the top of the pocket, you would not have to hand sew on his beard. So what I did, will do next time is sew the beard on by hand with a nice little applique stitch or something, and then leave the back open and stuff it through the back and close it up much easier than hand sewing a beard on. They had to do, use a little red felt ball. I just made kind of like a little pom-pom and sewed it on. I did put some weights in his behind so he stands up nice and flat, just like that. When you're turning him inside out, I use the Fast Tube Turner tool set. They are great for turning tubes inside out. They come in five or six different sizes. You slide your tool over this, your tube over this, put your wire through there and you pull it inside out and then your tube is right there. Really great. They come in a little package for you. The box is extra. Um, but they are just perfect for turning in inside out tubes. And then when I was pinning on his beard, these magic fork pins are awesome. These magic fork pins are kind of like using a twin needle. They have one shank, two pins coming out on the end and they're kind of angled so it makes it easy to pull out so you don't sew over them. And they also hold things in place better. Um, since it's two pins, you're not going to distort anything with just having one pin there. It's going to hold it better in place better. This is the Floriani Precision tool, Turning Tool. It's a great little tool for turning inside out projects, little tubes and stuff. The nice rounded end lets you kind of run along the seam and kind of crease it without having to iron if it's something that can't be ironed. It is weighted, so it feels really nice in your hand, and it has a flat side all the way around, so it won't roll across your table. It's a great little tool for all sorts of projects. This next project is called the Spell Phone Clutch from Quilt Smart. It comes with the pattern, and then you buy um, pre-printed interfacing panels, so you iron the interfacing onto your pattern or your fabric, it has all the lines marked on the interfacing where you fold it and where you sew your handles on. So you just kind of follow those little directions and put it together. I made it first out of this lovely um, canvas from Hobby Lobby. When I found out how easy it was, how quickly it went together and how cute and adorable it was, I went ahead and used some of my Mickey Mouse fabric. Found the second one. Did a little bit of the Kimberbell leather on the top. It has a great little snap here. Two pockets on the inside, one for your cell phone, one for a little tiny wallet. It's great. You can just make it a crossbody bag, throw it over your shoulder, go do your quick little shopping or whatever. I like the any kind of handle that I can remove. It is adjustable. I kind of added that in. Um, there's a video on how to make this from Quilt Smart. Takes about less than eight minutes for the video. They did kind of speed it up a little. Probably only took about 30 minutes to make this. So great for gifts, great for just you. You can never have too many purses and little wallets. And using this Kimberbell leather with the embroidery is just adorable on it. So I used a precision turning tool again when I made my Mickey Mouse bag. 
didn't know if you could really iron the leather from Kimberbell, so I just kind of used that when I turned it inside out to flatten out the round part of the up, upper flap, and it turned out perfect. And then I've never embroidered on Kimberbell leather. I've never actually even worked with it, and it turned out amazing. It's super easy. I just used a little bit of a glue stick, held it down on my stabilizer in the hoop, and did the embroidery, no puckers, no special needle, nothing, just push go and that was it. We have a few different colors for you, um, but it's just great stuff to work with. This radio frequency ID fabric is so that scammers can take your credit cards when you're carrying it around in your wallet. When you use that inside of the bag, you have your pre-printed interfacing, this RFID fabric, it makes the bag just perfect. You don't need extra stabilizers or anything. So it's a nice little addition to the bag, makes it a little easier to sew, and your credit cards are gonna be safe. And here is the other, the original bag I made. We've got the two pockets, the snap on the top of it, so it'll just hold it closed. Um, your cell phone and credit cards can go in here and you're just ready for a day of shopping. This book is called The Easy Home Sewing Projects. My daughter's moving out next month, so I thought I'd help decorate her house, her new apartment, get her some stuff to hang on the walls and whatever. So we started with this nice bolster pillow. I don't usually do round pillows because they're sort of a pain. So the book had really great directions on how to do the ends of them. Um, I always put zippers in my pillows. Then you use a covered button on the end, so it covers up the hole that you make when you do this. You do have to do this part by hand, but it's not a big deal. It's just a little bit of sewing, kind of like making a yo-yo. You fold it under a little bit, do a lot of st big stitches around it to pull it up together, and then you sew the button on, and you're all done with it. So it only took about half an hour to make this pillow easy. I did piping in the corners um, along the edges, and when you're doing piping, you should cut your edges, your pieces on the bias so it wraps around the cording really nice and easily. Um, when you're sewing it on, you use your zipper foot. And that's about it for it. It's just a nice little project to, you can never have too many pillows laying around. And this will be great on the bed. This next project is called, is just a little banner for the kitchen. Let's make food. So I did the lettering and my SFOF software. Really easy, just pick the font that you want, type it in, boom, you get that. I did the embroidery on burlap, super easy. I just used sticky on the, in the hoop, laid this on top of it, did a little glue stick in a few points, based around it to hold it still really well, um, and nothing special at all to do it. Put a little casing on the back so she can hang it with ribbon, use command hooks, whatever she wants to do, but you can hang it up and it'll just look adorable. There's quite a few projects in here, 101 projects for every room. Um, you have the bedroom cover, the kitchen, there's pillow cover or chair covers that you can make, some organizing things that you can make, um, stuff for your bathroom, stuff for to organize your closet, fabric baskets, all sorts of things, anything you need to organize your house. It's just a great little project. All my little sticky tabs were projects I really wanted to make. I only got a couple of them done, which is how it always works, but you can always go back and make something else. There's 101 projects in there for you to do. So another thing I made is by Lunchbox Quilts. It's Keep On Trucking Quilt, or you can make it into pennants. There's a truck for every month. So you can make one for each holiday, every month. There's Valentine's Day, Christmas, pumpkins. There's one for your sewing room. There's one for birthdays. And they're all in different old trucks. And I love old trucks. Um, so I just thought this was the cutest thing ever. You can also make mechanic on duty signs, garages open, all sorts of things. So perfect for, everybody says, what do you do for men? We usually don't do anything for men, but here's a perfect truck quilt. You can make it with just the truck with the embroidery, like the tree here, or just the truck, either one. So it's awesome. Um, again, I did it on burlap, and I used, since this has a lot of stitching in it, I used Terial Magic 
to kind of give it a little bit of stiffness and then just sticky or um, tear away on the backside. So after I sprayed it with Terrio Magic, put it in my hoop on, I used the Luminaire for this guy. Um, it is applique in the hoop, so there's not a lot of stitching. This whole design was only about one hour long, but there's a lot of applique. So it does the tack down stitch, you lay your green fabric down, it sews it down again, you trim it away. If you have a scan and cut, this is the absolute perfect time to use it because trimming away all of these little ins and outs of this tree took almost as long as it did to sew down the tree. So a scan and cut would have been perfect to use on this. Um, and then you does the applique on the truck and then the wheels and everything else. So it took about one hour to sew this out, but not counting the applique times. I just added the Merry Christmas lettering on my software, or actually I used the lettering in the Brother Luminaire. This is one of the built-in lettering systems. And just put it all together and a cute little another banner she can hang up. Um, but I just love embroidering on burlap. It's perfect easy. You do need to clean your machine out a little bit more when you're sewing on burlap because it is really fuzzy, but it's great to work with. So this Terrio Magic is a really strong starch and I love it on burlap because when you're having this many stitches in it, it'll hold it down. It's not going to shake and wiggle around on you on it with you. So it's great. Um, you just spray it on. I iron it dry. I don't have time to let it air dry. And it just gives everything a little, a lot of stiffness, which helps with sewing sometimes. And then when you're doing the trimming around the tree and whatever, these duckbill scissors are perfect. You kind of use the bill part underneath. It kind of just lifts the fabric up without grabbing the burlap. And you can just trim in and get really close to all of those little ins and outs of the thing. And then having tweezers with you also is great because when you're getting into these little tiny places, you can use these, these are not the tweezers. You can use these tweezers <laughs> to kind of hold up the fabric so that you can clip it really well. This is just a nice little scissor set from OESD. It's great that it's in one case, perfect for taking to classes. You have everything contained. If you are going to take it to classes, put your initials or a piece of ribbon or something on everything so you know it's yours. But it's a great whole little scissor set to take with you all the time. So this next project is an apron and you make it out of a tea towel. It's from Cut Loose Press. It's called a tea towel apron. It says it takes about two to six hours to make. It took me a little bit longer than two hours probably. What's great is you make it out of a towel and we ordered in some different towels for you. So you guys know I don't cook. I make brownies and a cake every once in a while, but I don't like cooking. But when you're sewing, you have so many threads all over you, you just look like you've been rolling around in threads. So I thought this would make a great apron for the sewing room. And it has this great little saying on it, give a quilter an inch and she'll think she's a ruler. So how funny is that for your sewing room apron? So I was at Hobby Lobby getting backing for some quilts and I found this adorable ruler fabric. So I had to buy that of course. So to make this apron, you make a little pleat in the front and you sew pieces on the side, it has little pockets on each side. The neck is just a few triangles that you cut out. It's all hemmed because it's a towel, so you don't have to do any hemming. It was a little big on me, so I folded in the edges just a little bit and just kind of seamed them down, and that's it. Nice and easy to make. They have you use inch and a half wide twill tape or bias tape for the straps on the back. I thought that looked a little goofy. I had plenty of this ruler fabric, so I just used that for the ties instead of twill tape. I think it looks more, much nicer. And now I have a nice little apron for my sewing room so I can just take it off if I have to go run somewhere and I won't have threads all over me. Okay, so when I turned my inside out, my triangle pieces here, I used my favorite little RNK precision turning tool again. Just kind of run it along the inside of the seam when you get it turned inside out. And it just makes it a little bit crisper, easier to press. You don't have anything that should have been pushed out further and didn't get pushed out. What's great is this is long. You can iron a little bit on the tip of it and it's not gonna burn you, but it 
won't melt this and it just makes it nice for turning anything inside out and getting great sharp crisp corners. And then we ordered in for you to make these towels, these lovely Kimberbell stripes and dots tea towels. Love the colors of the Kimberbell stuff. They are perfect. All you, they're the right size for this apron. You just sew your straps on, sew your neck triangles on, put your pockets on the edges and you are good to go. Super fast, quick, easy projects. Great for Mother's Day, Easter, perfect little Easter colors, really cute little things. And you can do some embroidery on these since they don't have little sayings on them. And then if you like the snarky sayings, a clean house is a sign of a broken sewing machine. And yes, I sew and no, I won't hem your pants. This next project is called the Easy Threezy Jacket. The designer of the jacket actually lives in Colorado. She's on the Western Slope somewhere. She's made the, we've done a few other of her patterns before and great directions. Really love her stuff. Um, so the pattern comes in many sizes. Um, I made a size 16. The, what you wanna do is trace your pattern out with Swedish tracing paper so that you can reuse it a few more times and this is my jacket. I made version one. Version two and three, one of them has a back flap here that is pieced, and then one of them has like a kick pleat on the back. I just did the plain one on the version one. The size 16, remember when you're making clothes, they are not the same as what you wear in the store. I wear about a six or eight. This is a size 16, but it fits me perfectly. There's not a lot of pieces to this. The sleeve is part of the front and back. So you have front and back, front facing, back facing, neck facing, that's it. And then this cute little cuff on the sleeve is like a little tulip cuff. So that's kind of a cute little addition. Made the whole thing on my serger. Um, I used my favorite little precision turning tool when I sewed my facing onto the fronts and all the way around it kind of pressed it out with this nice rounded end so that it makes it nice and easy to iron it and it comes out really crisp. Then you do a little top stitching and you're all done. So really quick little fast project. To mark the lines and some of the things you have to line up, I use this mark and trace three in one tool. It has great chalk that you can use. It has a tracing wheel that you can use. Um, different colors of chalk and you can also sharpen it. So it's a great little tool to mark all sorts of things and it's great because it has different colors. So you can see what you're doing. This blue would not work great. The red worked perfect on it. So this is my Easy 3Z jacket. So this next project is by Pickle Pie Designs. It's quilting in the hoop. You can do it in a 5x7, 6x10, 8x12, 9x14 hoop. So it covers all sorts of machines. I did this on part of it on the tin needle and part of it on the luminaire. Um, has four different blocks, good dog, little cute little doggy face, woof woof, and then some quilting designs of just dog bones. Okay, so this is all done in the hoop, applique in the hoop. So I did use my OESD duckbill scissors to trim out around all of these little designs. So with this one, it says good dog. Um, it does the quilting, then the this part of it, and then the bone. Use your scissors to trim it out. The puppy face, then woof woof, and then the quilting dog bones. Each design, each block took about 15 or 20 minutes. This one is only like seven minutes to sew out. So quick and easy. With the smaller sizes, you can make mug rugs, coasters with them, put them all into a big quilt do a banner like this perfect for a baby quilt it doesn't take much time to do the embroidery so it's really a fast little project and you can do big blocks and just do the quilting in the hoop with it and just have it all done really super fast so these duckbill scissors from oesd are really great for trimming up all of the little areas that you're going to applique down they're curved so you can it'll lift up what you're trimming away without getting the underneath fabric caught and cutting it apart. They're part of this whole little OESD scissor set that has a tweezers. 
nice little nippers for trimming up little threads everywhere and little curved scissors that will get in underneath the hoop near the needle but not too close to it. So great little set for you to keep on hand. So this awesome star quilt by Krista Moser is made with ombre fabrics from Maywood Studios. We have the packet, a fat quarter packet here for you. So you can do all of this. All of the darker triangles are from that fabric packet. And then I just went and purchased a few grays to blend in with it. So some, there's some grunge here from our Littleton store. We carry fabric now in case you didn't know that. Um, a little bit of other gray fabrics that you can splash in with it. What's great with this is the ombre fabric, it just really makes it really pretty. Not everything is a solidy look, but a little bit of texture in it. When I made this quilt, I used my magic fork pins to hold these two points together a little better than just one pin. Um, that kind of helps line up all of these little one and a half inch strips going around. Um, when I was putting this part together, I did line up some of the other piece blocks together too. I just did random little tiny stippling all over the whole quilt. And to do the binding, I didn't want any of this gray fabric along the edge. So I did face binding. So basically you sew your binding on the front, you flip the entire piece to the back and stitch it down by hand. Um, I cut this at two inches wide instead of usually about two and a quarter or two and a half. And it's just the same as what's on the back. So it doesn't show at all. But it looks really cool on the front. You don't see a binding. You don't have any of the gray around the edge of the colors. Um, but it's just a great way to finish off an art quilt or some sort of quilt like this when you don't really want the binding on it. So the pattern for the quilt is called Double, Double, Starch, Double Struck Star by Krista Moser. It goes along with this pattern I did for our December sofa and our quick little projects that we did, this little um, hollow star table runner. Great little two hour gift that you can do with Christmas fabric, any other fabric also. And both of them use this 60 degree diamond ruler from Creative Grids. It has all the markings you need to do diamonds, triangles, and a few little uh, 30 degree ruler, 30 degree shapes also. Um, what's nice with Creative Grid rulers, they have the grippy stuff on the back so the ruler doesn't slide around a lot. The little pins that I use, the magic fork pins, are these little guys. So it's one pin, but two little poke, two little pin prongs on it. So it holds your fabric a little more precise and then instead of just one pin. So this is what it looks like. And then we have the Gelato Fat Quarter Bundle for you by Maywood Studios. They are beautiful fabrics that are just an ombre sort of thing with all the different colors in each piece. This is what I started with. These are all the big scraps that I have. You can make a whole nother quilt with the um, ombre fabrics that I cut into. These are just the pieces I didn't even cut into. So you can get a lot of quilts out of this one fat quarter bundle. So this next quilt is called Rail Run. It's a panel quilt pattern by Mountain Peak Creations, which is kind of part of Holly's Quilt Cabin. Love the store. I got this quilt kit at that store. I walked in and it was hanging there, the whole marina scene. I'm like, oh, I have to have this pattern. So this whole kit was provided. Um, what's great when you're making panel quilts is you can kind of make it your own size. So not all panels are the same size. So you do need to make sure if you you pay attention to the pattern and see what size they have you cut the panel down to. You might have to trim parts of it off to make it fit this. I didn't want to trim any of this off, so I just had to lengthen these pieces here a little bit more to make it work. Um, but it went together really quick. Nothing has to match anywhere. Everything is just, there's no matching seams and everything, which is always great with panels and stuff. Um, I did, we have the book Transform Fabric Panels into One of a Kind Art Quin Quilts. So I did all sorts of different quilting on this panel. Um, some swirls and stuff down here to kind of make it look a little like 
ocean waves and whatever, kind of some movement up here in the sky, just some wavy lines here, some little stippling around the edges. Um, so when you're doing panel quilts, you can do all sorts of quilting with it, kind of emphasize each design section of it and practice a lot of your quilting techniques in little areas that are kind of worked out for you instead of going to a big thing. So really cool quilt, really quick and easy to make. Um, and I just did the binding on the back with the Lori Holt um, binding needles, which are great, really big eyes, so you don't have to get your glasses on to see. Um, and they just flow in and out of the binding really quick. So this is the pattern I have, Rail Run Fence by Mountain Peak Creations. They did change the look of the pattern. They put a different quilt on the front. So if you already have it, just check and make sure you have the same pattern, different picture on the front. But these are the ones you'll be getting, you'll be seeing at the store. And then this book is creating art quilts with panels. So it gives you great ideas. You can use some textury things um, to highlight your quilting on your panel quilt, um, different quilting techniques that you can do. Just great little ways to make a panel not look boring. It will really make it look like a work of art. And then these needles here are the Nifty Needles by Lori Holt, Be In My Bonnet. Um, there are lots of different needles here for binding, doing chunky stuff like big, big hand stitching, for, bind, or for quilting, embroidery needles, um, all sorts of nice little whole package of needles for you. And they're great. They're color coded so you know what you're getting. And they're just really great needles, especially the binding ones. They're just awesome. So this next quilt is another panel quilt from Villa Rosa Designs. It's called Fer Fernanda. So really easy to make. Again, panel quilts are great because half of it's all done for you. You just add a couple of little triangles in the tops and a few borders and you're all done. So one thing to remember when you're doing panel quilts is this Donald Duck quilt was a lot bigger than that panel directions came called for. And I didn't want to cut it down at all. So I just had to increase the borders a little bit to make it work, but it worked out perfect. I did the quilting with finesse thread that we have at the store. I did a piped binding. So it gives a little bit of splash of red around the edges. To do piped binding, you cut your piping piece at one and five eighths inch wide and your binding piece is one and three eighths inches. Sew them together, press it towards the piped side, I think, and sew it on the back, flip to the front, stitch in the ditch, and there's no stitching on the back side that you can see, and it looks great on the front. But I love my new Donald Duck quilt. Um, just really fast, easy panel quilts you can make. Great for baby gifts, anything. Really great patterns. This next quilt is called Peppermint Lane by It's So Emma. And I saw it and I'm like, I have to make this quilt. It is so stinking cute. So it's designed as a block of the month. So we will be doing a class on it when classes start up again. You will, it's, I made it out of scraps. I just pulled out a lot of red and green fabrics out of my stash at home. Um, I had a little bit of border print that I purchased at High Prairie Quilts. Um, my background fabric came from wooden spools and it's just really sort of easy quilt to make, really fun, not hard at all, just lots of piecing, lots of little fuzzy piecing, in, but it was easy to do. So this is my new favorite Christmas quilt. You make it, um, it's a block of the month quilt pattern. So each block, each month you do a different project. So the gingerbread men were first, really easy to make. A lot of stitch and flip the corners to get them little points, little hands and stuff. I love the house. Um, I had this great red brick fabric. I love the detail on it, even these little um, shutters in the windows, the curtains, the yellow glow behind it makes it look like it's got candles in the light windows. Um, then you do these adorable little ornaments, some nice stars, these little pine bow, boughs, the wreaths, the Christmas presents on the end, and these candy canes just turned out so cute. 
um, and the trees are just perfect. Um, so each section is one block. By the end of the 12 months, you have the whole thing put together. Just did some really easy quilting. Mallory came over and quilted it for me. Just some wavy lines, nothing really detailed or anything, but just looks really good. Um, whenever I'm doing something with this much detail in it, it's hard to notice if you've made a mistake when you're just looking at the whole thing. I always take a picture of it. And when I took a picture, I noticed my candy canes were a little um, upside down. So I hadn't noticed that when I was putting it together. And when I took the picture, I immediately saw the candy canes were not the way they're supposed to. So sometimes it's better to take a picture of see what you're doing and make sure everything is positioned in here. When you got all this stuff going on, take a picture of it, make sure it's on there the way it's supposed to be. And then the binding sewn down on the front and flipped over to the back with the Lori Holt binding needles. So my new favorite Christmas quilt, and I think it just turned out so cute. So this quilt is also in the book. It's called the North Star Bonus Quilt. I love star quilts. It was a great way to use up all of my scrap batik fabrics and then a little bit of grunge for the background. Um, I sewed the binding onto the back, flipped it to the front and just edge stitched it. These are really easy blocks to make. Um, just some half square triangles with a fold and flip method and big square in the center and that was it. Sashing strips in between and you're already, already done with it. So really fast little quilt to make. So this is the book Peppermint Lane by It's So Emma. Great little Christmas quilt with a bonus North Star quilt in the back of it. It's designed as a block of the month. You do one section each month. By the end of the year, you have an entire quilt put together. When we start doing classes again, this will be a class at the Littleton store. Just bring your scraps, a couple of yards of background fabric and some border pieces and you will be ready to go. Then in the quilt, you're sewing a lot of flip and turn, sew and flip triangle pieces and some of them are one inch, one and seven eighths inch. So it's kind of a pain always using your iron that's always dying on you because they're automatic turn off irons. So this little roll in press guy is a great little tool. You just roll it on your stitch and flip corners and it's great. No, you don't have to do the iron as often. And since you are working with a lot of bias pieces in this quilt, Terriel Magic is awesome. Just spray it on all your bias pieces. It's not gonna stretch out. It's gonna make everything line up better. Um, I use it in the triangle quilt. I use it a lot in all these little tiny pieces and it's just some great stuff. So this little book is called Pocket Guide to Sewing Notions. It's great, we're all home sewing now. Some of us have inherited some sewing things or we are cleaning our rooms and finding these notions and things that we have and we aren't totally sure what they're for. This little guide will show you pictures, explain what it's for, how to use it, or just even tell you what it is. Um, also, if you're trying to do something, you're not sure you're doing it the right way, this might give you some notions that you can purchase to help make your job easier. I love this little book. It's a quilting life monthly planner. Um, it's a calendar so you can plan, you know, I love using planners. I'm still not the phone planner sort of person. Um, I need it written down where I can take it with me. Um, but this helps you organize your sewing room, gives you 20 organizational tips for your stash of fabric, how to organize your scraps, plan out your quilts for the month, the year, um, plan your projects, all that kind of thing. Plus gives you an everyday calendar so you can keep track of where you're supposed to be and why and all that fun stuff. And this little gadget is the sixth finger stiletto. So it's kind of flat on one side, pokey on the other. It's great to use this instead of your finger because if you hit this, it's not gonna hurt as bad as if you sew your finger. So it's a great little tool. It's two pointy things on the end so you can hold things down and sew with it. So it's a great little tool. This little guy is a great little pendant, little necklace thing that is also a seam ripper. So you can be sitting on the plane doing a little bit of handwork, flip this out and cut your threads, trim up everything as you're going, have it with you at class when you're sewing, you know you're going to have to use it, just keep it handy and have a nice little necklace to go with it to make it just perfect. So that's all we have for you today. Thanks for coming. 
We'll see you again soon in person. Um, make sure you stop by each store. Aurora will have all the projects, all the samples first, and then it'll travel to Cold Springs, West Littleton, and then Westminster, and you'll get to see everything in person, pick up your anything you want to buy, and they'll be there ready for you. Thanks a lot, guys. We miss you.